question number one. In what ways does your media product use, develop or challenge conventions of real media products? I'll be using Inception's teaser trailer and Elephant cinematic trailer as examples. Although Elephant's trailer isn't teaser, it's a cinematic, we liked some of the shots it used and also liked the general idea of Elephant and so adapted it. We decided to create our own distribution company and logo. We looked at various logos such as Warner Bros and the Weinstein Company. Both of these are black and white and we like the monochrome colour scheme because it's typical of most thriller films and it's also bold and large. They also have a slight animation and we wanted to include this and so incorporated this into ours. Our establishing shot shows a calm green and bright atmosphere that very much challenges conventions of thrillers as well as Inception's opening shot which is a cityscape that has black and grey colours. However, our opening shot is similar to Elephant's in the sense of it showing nature and what seems to be a calm atmosphere. Unlike Elephant and Inception, we didn't advertise the director or put ourselves as directors. We chose not to do this because we're not well-known directors and so the information would be irrelevant to our audience and so wouldn't be effective. We also linked our campaign to our teaser trailer by showing this shot of Tabitha scrolling through a tumbler and looking at disturbing and upsetting images. We included this high angle point of view shot showing the students and life around college. This shows conventions of both thrillers and social realism. This shot shows Tabitha's control over students at college and perhaps how she craves dominance. This challenges Inception in the fact that most of the shots are eyeline height and so are different to what we've done. Through the course of our teaser trailer, our transitions between shots are hard cuts. This is similar to both Inception and Elephant. We introduce our titles with a cinematic boom to grab the audience's attention. We decided to keep our titles large and bold with white on black background, very much like Inception. This is very typical of teasers in the thriller genre. Much like Inception, we decided to really hint on the significant prop, this being our gun. This is similar to Inception because it shows a spinning top. This is good at introducing part of the narrative to the audience. Here we have a break in our ongoing music. We did this to give some depth in our soundscape and so we can really build into a climax and include both diegetic and non-diegetic sounds. This is a contrast to both Inception and Elephant as they continuously have their music and sounds playing. Here we introduce a gun sound which is clearly diegetic as it's part of the film world and we also have a couple other climactic sounds such as the whooshing sound that help build into the climax of the gunshot and also include a heartbeat which is clearly diegetic. The overall music that we include is non-diegetic as the people in the film can't hear it. We created our own soundtrack for our teaser and we decided to keep it minimalistic but we also wanted to keep it somewhat up and bouncy to be contrapunctal, like Elephant. Our inspiration for this was Pumped Up Kicks by Foster the People, and you can probably tell that the bass line and the drum beat are quite similar. In this shot sequence and through our teaser trailer we decided to keep our killer or main character identity unknown and hidden till the very end. This is different to both Inception and Elephant but we believe that hiding our identity was a good idea because identity is a big theme in thriller movies and so we incorporated this. We interrupt your program. Here we introduce our voiceover or a news story. We wanted to introduce panicked phone calls or police talking over walkie talkies to create a sense of realism in our trailer. This is because we use the true happenings at Columbine as some of our real media texts. Um, we decided to create a new story in this form as we felt it suited better to our teaser. 
This challenges both Inception and Elephant, as they both don't have a voiceover like this. We also include a shot that's similar to one of Elephant's trailers, in terms of colour and leading lines in the shot. It's very similar to Elephant. I believe that this shot shows aspects of social realism and our initial school sitting very well. Next, we have a fast shot sequence to help build up our climax title. Thank you that we have received reports of a school shooting in Surrey. This has been confirmed as a major incident by Scotland Yard. The perpetrator is still armed and dangerous. We have Tabitha walking as an ongoing shot and included in between various shots hinting to narrative. This is very similar to a sequence in the Inception teaser. We adapted this idea by including more titles that give hints about the narrative and our tagline. In this shot sequence, we also include a shot of Tabitha putting a gun to her head. This is similar to our poster and also shows our brand, which is Tabitha's pink bows in her hair. We then reach our title, Innocence, and introduce it with a very loud and rumbling cinematic boom. This is similar to mainly Inception, but is also done in Elephant and is a very typical thing in teaser trailers. It's also a very good way of hinting climax in the teaser and grabbing the audience's attention. Lastly, we introduce our release date with a pink hue, followed by our hashtag the real world. We wanted to put this in last so it really stays in our audience's mind. Inception shows their release date close to the end, but not right at the end like we chose to do. For our poster, our inspiration was Elephant's poster, which was posted in France and possibly Europe. And we also liked aspects of the loved ones. We liked aspects of many other posters, but these were our two main favourites. We like the artistic approach to the elephant poster, with the white paint line across the poster contrasted with an orangey background. The one thing we didn't want to include was the use of iconography, which is the elephant, as we felt that the use of this only worked with that movie campaign due to its unique name. We also enjoyed the colour scheme and use of the background on the loved one's poster. We liked how her significant weapon is immediately shown to the public and the use of pink contrasted against the dark blues. Our final poster looks more like elephants with the splash-like colours used for the background. We incorporated and emphasised our main character's significant weapon by making it black and so it contrasts nicely with the various other colours on the poster. We have our tagline right at the top also like the loved ones. This is also a general convention of most posters. Unlike both of these posters, we included our hashtag and so really pushed forward our campaign. We also include ratings, unlike any of these two posters, as we felt that a five star rating would attract more of our target audience. For our magazine, we decided to create our own and so do a special edition version so we could push forward branding and ensure that we have our desired target audience and cover stories that would be relevant. Our magazine is rather conventional and is a mix of sight and sound in GQ magazine with these editions. Our magazine is called Insight. Like both magazines, we included a full body shot so you can see our character from head to toe. We liked the way GQ kept Emma Watson in character, and so we did this too. Our background is similar to our poster, and so this again works well with branding. We included news stories that would attract our target audience. We also included our title, and have named the magazine Innocence Edition, indicating that it's a special edition. Our only downfall, I feel, with the magazine cover is that in the picture we have our character wearing a different shirt to our teaser and poster. This isn't a major downfall, however it is noticeable.